Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, how to get started with the hobby of knife making. So I get a ton of mail from people who say, you know, I want to start making knives, but I don't really know where to start. Well, this is a sort of short, semi-practical guide on what you need to do in order to get started with this hobby. Now, I also get a lot of mail from guys who are interested in becoming professional knife makers. That's not what we're talking about here. But the first thing I always say to those guys is, you know, before you start thinking about making a living making knives, become a hobbyist. You know, the, the money will take care of itself later. First thing you got to do is stand in front of a belt grinder hour after hour, getting covered with dust, wearing a respirator in a hot shop, doing all that kind of stuff. And if at that point, you know, you really want to make money at it, then think about it then. But first, just focus on having fun with knife making, making knives, seeing if, if you really enjoy the, the hobby. Okay, so the first point I'd like to make is start small. You don't have to know everything there is to know about knife making on day one. The first time I got paid to make a knife was about a decade and a half ago, but I still don't know everything there is to know about making knives, not even close. It's okay to be ignorant. I mean, that's where you start. That's where I started. That's where everybody started. Recognition that you don't know something is the first step in learning to do it right. The whole key to learning any hobby is to recognize that you accumulate skills slowly, so focus on acquiring those skills. Wood and plastic are easier to work with than steel, so handles are a great place to start. Move on to steel when you feel ready. Let's begin by talking about your workspace. Uh, obviously, you do need a place to work, but it doesn't have to be huge or elaborately equipped. Ideally, though, you'd like an indoor workshop in some place like a basement or a garage or a shed. The most important thing is that you need a stable counter, table, or workbench to work on. For sure, you'll want a bench vice set up on it. And that's really about it. If you have lots of space, a big electrical service, heat, air conditioning, ventilation, so much the better. But it's possible to make a knife at the kitchen table. Don't expect your spouse to love that plan. I'm just saying. You know, back when my friend Jesus Hernandez got started, he had very limited space. So he put his equipment on wheels and rolled all his forging equipment into the driveway. Now he has a huge, beautiful, dedicated shop building built just for knife making, but he didn't start there. There's a guy on one of the knife forums who lives someplace in Eastern Europe. He lives in one of these big high-rise apartment blocks, and uh, he actually makes knives out on the balcony of his high-rise apartment. So if that guy can do it, you know, you can do it somewhere. Point is, a little ingenuity is way more important than some giant workspace. Next, let's talk tools. People really get wrapped around the axle about tools. There's just no need for that. So don't get freaked out about gear. I've got a bunch of videos that show you how to make some really simple knives with really simple tools. You watch a lot of YouTube videos or forged in fire or whatever and you think, man, I gotta have that belt grinder and a forge and an anvil and that guy's got like 20 hammers and 8,000 pairs of tongs. No, some people spend more time collecting hammers than they do making knives. You don't need all that stuff to get started. A hacksaw, a drill, sandpaper, a bench vise, a file, that's really about all you need to get started. I've got a video on my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, about tools for the knife maker that discusses all kinds of knife making tools. But don't get too caught up in the gear thing. What's always worked for me when learning a new skill is to focus on a project. Come up with a simple project. Don't try to make a katana or a Damascus steel this or that. Don't try to make some huge sword. Come up with a simple project. A throwing knife, a kit knife, a neck knife, a knife with a cord wrapped handle. Something you can really get your hands around. Then figure out how to make it using relatively cheap simple tools. 
Hey guys, I'm jumping in here real quick to let you know that I recently partnered up with Patreon, a service that helps creators find partners to support their efforts. Now, I put in literally hundreds of hours of work on this channel, a fair amount of money, all of it to help you guys learn stuff. So if you find value in the channel and you want to find a way to give a little bit back and help me make more videos, more frequently, better videos, just click the link for Patreon or the card, go to my Patreon page, help me help you. Now, a technical point. There's a general split among knife makers between guys who forge knives and guys who make knives by stock removal. The first guys beat their knives into shape with hammers, so they have big fires and anvils and troughs full of oil and, well, a lot of gear. The second sometimes have a ton of gear, sometimes not but it's easier and simpler to start out on the stock removal side. If you get serious about it, eventually you're going to want a high quality belt grinder, but you don't have to start there. Start with a file, maybe move up to a small belt grinder, and once you start to get really serious, then spend a couple grand for that big one. So. Let's say you bought a knife kit or two, maybe replace the handle on a knife. You bought a bench vise, a couple of files, maybe even a drill press, and you want to get a little more ambitious, great. You can go crazy with tools, mills, CNC equipment, heat treating ovens, lathes. I mean, it's just endless what you can spend money on. but no need of that when you first get started. Next issue, materials. This is one of the areas that people get really um, kind of nervous about because there are a bewildering number of steels out there. Uh, there are all kinds of specialty materials that you might use as a knife maker. Um, but this is something that you can kind of strip down to some simple elements just for getting started. Bottom line, at some point, if you're going to make a knife from scratch, you'll need a piece of steel. Just go buy it. You'll need the right kind of steel, though. Welding steel from Home Depot won't hack it. Good news, you can buy a piece of high carbon steel like 1075 from Admiral Steel or other knife makers' supply houses for very little money. Over the interweb, do it in your pajamas. From the same suppliers, you can buy stainless steel if you prefer that. A little more expensive, but not a bank breaker. Bear in mind, stainless steel is harder to heat treat and you'll probably need to pay somebody to do the heat treat for you. See, all steel needs to be heat treated. What I mean by that is that it has to be heated up screaming hot and then cooled down quickly enough to cause a molecular change in the structure of the steel, which causes it to harden. Now, with carbon steel, you can actually do this in a charcoal fire. But if that sounds too complicated, go the stainless steel route. Send off your knife to a professional heat treater. The same folks who sold you the steel often offer heat treating services. I recommend checking out the websites of knife making supply houses. They have infinite amounts of materials that are used by knife makers. Handle materials, woods, pins, sheath materials, all kinds of stuff. The good news is that beyond steel, most of this stuff is not super specialized. But a lot of the stuff that you use, you can buy at Home Depot. Later on, you may want to get fancier woods and fancier pins and so forth, but this is not a material intensive hobby. Lots of tools involved, yes, but materials, you can really use a very small list and make quite a nice knife. All right, final stop here, mindset. This is without question the most important part of this video. Don't be scared to be obsessed. Your wife, your mom, your kids, your friends, none of them will think that knife making's all that cool. That's okay. It's okay to spend all weekend reading forums on the web and surfing through the pages of knife making supplier catalogs instead of doing useful things like making money, going to church, playing with your children, mowing the lawn, and fixing all the crap that's broken in your house. That stuff's for chumps. 
Seriously though, I think a lot of people are not so much scared to try something new as they are afraid that they're being self-indulgent. Where is it written that slicing the top one and three quarter inches off a bunch of grass in your yard is more important than making a knife? Nowhere. Don't be afraid to be passionate about something that most people aren't that interested in. So be an eternal student. Always be learning. There's an enormous amount of information out there. Absorb it. Bathe in it. Forums, YouTube, Blade Magazine, Knives Illustrated, videos you can buy from guys like me, books, hammer-ins, conventions. There's so much out there. Maybe you could find a local knife maker and pay him a couple hundred bucks to spend a day or two showing you the ropes. Whatever. Spend as much time absorbing information as you can. See how a bunch of different guys go about making knives, and then try to find a path that makes sense for you. I particularly recommend buying three or four of the basic knife making books, because they cover how to buy tools, basic metallurgy, basic techniques, heat treating, and so on. Look them up on Amazon. There's not necessarily a specific one you should read, but if you find three or four of them, chances are you'll learn plenty of stuff from all of them. It'll be the best money you ever spend, and most of them don't assume that you own a small machine shop. Finally, just take concrete steps. Buy a piece of steel. 20 or 30 bucks will get you enough steel to make 5 or 10 carbon steel knives. 1075, 1095, and 01 steels are all pretty good starter steels. 50 to 75 bucks will get you enough stainless steel for a handful of small knives. Plunk down your money. Make the commitment to yourself. I'm going to make a knife. Start to finish. If it sucks, fine. If you hate doing it, fine. If you get halfway through and realize you have no clue what you're doing, fine. Nobody's watching you. Nobody's judging you. Nobody's going to make fun of you if your knife isn't as good as something made by that custom knife guy you saw on Discovery Channel. Truth is, nobody gives a shit but you. One step then another, then another. Next thing you know, you'll be sitting around in a 12-step group with a bunch of guys moaning about your tool addiction. But that's a long, long way away. You have years before you hit bottom. For now, just enjoy the rush. Hey guys, if you found value in this video, I hope you'll consider partnering with the channel to help us bring more videos, better videos, more knives, more techniques, all that cool stuff. Click the link to Patreon to help this channel. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, bro, what are you waiting on? And check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Also, if you're into Japanese swords, check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you'll see more of my work and where you'll find videos about the making of Japanese swords, along with mounting, fittings, polishing, hamones, all kinds of good stuff. Now, more videos.